sleep apnea is a very, very dangerous disease when it's untreated. Patients can be left with severe medical problems. Imagine waking up continuously throughout the night, gasping for breath, and then when it's time to get up, you feel like you've never slept. This actually happens to people who suffer from something called sleep apnea. Linnea knows exactly how this feels. I found out I had sleep apnea from my fiance. I noticed she was sleeping and she would stop breathing during her sleep. I would give her a little nudge and then she'd start breathing again. Obstructive sleep apnea is basically collapsing of the airways during stages of deep sleep. The major effect it's had on my life is just being so tired, just wanting to take a nap during the day, not wanting to go out and enjoy life. What we're going to do with Linnea today in surgery is basically address all the areas of upper airway obstruction. We'll be addressing her nasal obstruction. We're going to take out her tonsils, reconstruct the back of her throat. First, we're going to position the patient properly so that her head's in a good position. And we're going to place a retractor in her mouth. So she's got very, very large, very cryptic or pocketing tonsils which look like they're chronically inflamed, and this is definitely contributing a significant amount to our upper airway obstruction. Sleep apnea is a very, very dangerous disease when it's untreated. Patients can be left with severe medical problems, things like diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, and even heart attack. So this is the uh, plasma blade that's designed to do the initial part of this operation, and you can see that when I do this, it doesn't cause a burn or an injury to the tissue. There's minimal bleeding, minimal to no bleeding. So that's her tonsil on one side. It's a nice sized tonsil. The next part of this operation is gonna be to actually mobilize this, called, this tissue called the uvula and mobilize these pharyngeal tissues and lift this tissue up and pull this tissue sideways to create a large opening in the back of her throat. I'm actually just looking at her throat and I'm determining how much tissue I need to take and how I need to reposition the tissue in a more anatomically favorable location so that her airway doesn't block off at night when she sleeps. So basically, I'm just finishing up with Linnea's uh, surgery, and you can get a sense now that there's much more space back here, which was completely closed off or collapsed before. So we have Linnea right here after that surgery, and, and her surgeon, Dr. Brian Weeks, Head and neck surgeon and specialist. Welcome back. Thank you, Drew. Thank you very much. Good to be here. That was some really cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's really exciting. You know, when you think about a disease like obstructive sleep apnea and you think about the number of people in our country that are suffering from it, I mean, it's really, it, it's kind of mind-boggling. And that's you know? chronic medical problems associated with it, too. So she went to a sleep center, was worked up. You found her to be a good candidate for this type of surgery. Yeah. So exactly okay. what did you do? Absolutely. Well, let's talk, I want to talk, if I can, for just a second about how we worked Linnea up, because mm -hmm. I think that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. When you think about sleep apnea, I mean, frequently, you know, people that have it don't really know that they have sleep apnea. They just know that they're tired all the time. They're walking around like a zombie. Their work performance might be, you know, not great. They're going to their car at lunch to take a nap instead of having lunch and interacting with their colleagues. So we send those patients for a sleep study, which is basically coming into a, an area where they're tested, they're, they're monitored during a night of typical sleep. And after that, we read over those results. A sleep specialist will look at those and determine if they have apnea or not. And then we'll move to the next step, which is, as you mentioned, the treatment of sleep apnea. So you treated her surgically, and I know a big part of that was this new plasma blade technology. Why, why is that so great? in this type of case. This is a model of the throat. And um, for Linnea, this is basically shows exactly what her problem was and what we did. If you think about the throat, the tonsillar tissue lives just to, just to the side of the uvula. So basically, we're repositioning this thing that hangs down in the back. We're removing the tonsils, and we're effectively making the throat wider, and we're making the throat more open and bringing it up and forward. And we're doing that without cutting out a lot of tissue. We're really just repositioning. Drew, I call it a facelift of the throat. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're basically lifting the throat. And the plasma blade allows us to do that without damaging the throat and without burning the tissues, because once we make these little openings, we have to sew them and they have to heal properly so this this device has really changed the way we do the surgery and so this is great for obstructive sleep apnea you're removing the obstruction and Linnea, you're three weeks out two weeks, two weeks out yes 
How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I wake up, I'm rested in the morning. It's, it's good. It's best and, thing and I And should get better and better, right? Absolutely. It takes six to 12 weeks. She'll continue to improve every week for the well, next look, The rested. best study is that she looks good, she yeah. feels good. We actually have Kelly here in the audience who had this procedure done. How long has it been for you, Kelly? It's been about a year. How's it been? You know, before, this, before the surgery, I would have difficulty sleeping at night. I would wake up with heart palpitations, um, difficulty breathing, and now it's great. I can't wait to go to sleep at night. I get a great night's sleep. I wake up refreshed. Having the surgery was one of the best things I ever did. Congratulations. And last but not least, before we go to break, sleep is so important. How can we take preventative steps or help minimize our symptoms of sleep apnea if we're out there potentially suffering from it. Absolutely. I mean, Travis, that's, that's really the take-home message here. I mean, we know this is a serious disease. It leads to dangerous health problems if it's not treated. Millions of people have it, and yet we know that most of those people haven't been made aware that they do have it. I always stress, first thing is diet. I mean, we want to eat healthy, and there are things that we preach all the time proper diet, proper exercise. Another thing is sleep hygiene. I mean, really, you know, the, the, the time you go to sleep every night and the time you wake up, most of us are creatures of habit. And if you try to go to bed at the same time every night, try to avoid drinking excessive alcohol, eating spicy foods, things like that. And then lastly, you have to ask your you know, bed partner, if they tell you that you're snoring or choking or making a gasping noise and stopping breathing, or if you're going to bed for eight hours every night and waking up tired, something's wrong and you need to point that out to your, your health care professional. Well, thank you, Dr. Weeks. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, guys. Continue. Good luck to you.